So I wanted to talk to you today about a tool that we made using deep learning to automate the problem of sequence stratigraphy. So if you're not familiar with it, sequence stratigraphy is an analysis of seismic images that tells a story about the, depositional, the deposition of sediments over time. And that's what formed the landmass that we're looking at in the seismic. It's an interpretive science and it requires trained experts to do. For us, using AI, it's a problem of image segmentation, where the training data is made by an expert interpreter. We work very closely with seismic interpreters, and with their guidance, we came to a fuzzy, more textual approach, which led to the deep learning, which we developed and explored. For practicality constraints, we only used a very minimal training data, less than one-tenth of one percent of the total seismic volume. So just to demonstrate that, we're going to bring up um, NThought's GeoCanopy application, and we're going to load up the Poseidon dataset, which is an open data that we applied our automated uh, interpretation package to. So in this view, we're showing you a time slice through that data in map view. The red lines represent the three seismic sections that were sampled and interpreted by the experts. Here, it, we're showing you basically an interpretation that the, one of the experts made on one of the lines. You can see three different colored segments you know, red, green, yellow, blue, and these represent what are called parasequences. So these parasequences are understood to be sort of related in how they were created over time. We take this image from these three segments, from these three lines, and we train the AI, the machine learning algorithm, to interpret that now across the entire volume. So to visualize the results, what I'm gonna do is basically we have an entire volume that's been automatically interpreted by the AI. And I'm going to show you the boundary between two of the sequences. In this case, it's the boundary between the green and the yellow. And I'm going to show you what, the, um, what a horizon would look like along that boundary. And what we see is a lot of very fine detail. We see channels and valleys in the data. This little bit over here where it's broken up is, is a salt dome, so we're not imaging that well. Um, but these results are very promising, they're, they're geologic in nature, and they're suitable for a basin level interpretation. So what we learned in this process was that the deep learning and the network architecture that gets so much attention was only one part of a larger problem. Labeling seismic data efficiently, pre and post processing steps are required and data augmentation to make the most of the very limited training data that we had available. Deep learning technology is, is changing so fast. In fact, over the course of developing this project, new ideas were becoming available that we could apply to solving these problems. Methods of stacking and ensembling these networks were integrated into our workflow so that we could train networks and when new ideas became available, we could immediately assimilate them. Post-processing steps were applied so that we could make the character of the solution that the AI was finding consistent with our a priori geologic understanding of how the Earth works. So what are the next steps from here? So firstly, better labeling tools so we can quickly and efficiently label seismic data. We need better integration with our cloud compute so we can quickly iterate on new ideas as they become available. And we need reproducibility. Our system should operate like a digital lab book. Every experiment and every test should be recorded and to be reproducible at any point in the future.